and welcome to Let's Play Eastern Mine, The Lost Souls of Tongno. Tongno, by the way, translates literally to Eastern Mind again, so it's Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Eastern Mind. Go figure! Anyway, what we have here is the title screen of the game, and that's Tongno in Japanese, again. So yes, the title screen. What we see here is a brief video depicting all of the characters that we will play as throughout the LP, and I believe it's also low-resolution footage used for the trailer of this game, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, this game was made by outside directors. The head of said game studio would be Osamu Sato, an independent Japanese musician, who received critical acclaim for his video and music work, to the degree where he managed to talk Sony ImageSoft into publishing his games for him. Osamu Sato maintained massive creative control over the game as it went through development, so the themes and content of the game are very much a product of his imagination. We'll see as we begin the game now. We actually have to click on these objects to pick them up, it's not an automatic process. And a brief cultural note, a furashiki is a kind of wrapping cloth used to transport objects, it's roughly equivalent to a bindle. We also receive an amulet, spelled with two L's for some inexplicable poorly proofread reason. So there we have it, we're pursuing our lost soul, as per the title. I choose to take the interpretation that this is a metaphor for discovering oneself. And this is the island of Tongno! Osamu Sato's giant, green, floating in a void head. Because Osamu Sato is the kind of man who thinks the best way to depict an exploration of oneself is literally. Right now I'm just poking all of the different spots on Osamu Sato's head, because they all do different and weird and strange things, but none of them serve any actual function otherwise. They're just little eccentricities he put there. Like this! No point to this, but it's there. And this one, which just makes a weird noise. <laughs> Right then, let's investigate this strange triangle symbol on the back of his head. And this takes us to the central mountain of the island of Tongno, also called Tongno. And said mountain is stamp sealed, but I can see our protagonist's name at the top of the stamp seal, Rin. And the specific way that Rin is spelled means his name means to confront, with the nuance of standing strong in the face of something scary, which I think is fitting for our protagonist. And keeping in mind that Tongno means Eastern Mind, this is the central mountain called Eastern Mind, on the island called Eastern Mind, in the game called Eastern Mind, with the subtitle The Lost Souls of Eastern Mind. I like to envision Sato getting very angry at a worker in his workplace for blaring the pet shop boys. <laughs> this creature, called a Fang Xing, does nothing more than dispense hints for us. Right now he's telling us that anywhere we see the triangle sign, we can get to the central mountain of Tongno from there. Continue forward and see these things. Six things we can press, but only two of them actually do anything. I don't understand why. Uh, let's choose the top one. We chose correctly and were granted admission into the Land of Desire. Now this pillar here, you can see, contains the triangle sign again, which when clicked on, just as the Fangshin said, takes us straight back to the central mountain. Incidentally, that triangle sign represents the Chu Ten, which uh, is a thing related to the sequel to this game. I'm not getting into it now, but uh, it's there. And this pillar here has an eyeball on it and possesses different music. When we click on it, it brings us here, a very special area. This area is completely optional, you don't ever need to go here to finish the game. The Phantom Marketplace. Mm -hmm. 
take a left here. The middle cup inexplicably transmogrifies into an eyeball stone, which serves no function other than to be used in the phantom marketplace. Hey, I saw someone behind there. This guy allows us to trade items for other items. Helpfully indicated here is what items you can trade and what you'll get. You can see here we can trade our amulet for some kind of book. The Phantom Marketplace also exists as kind of like a way to solve puzzles in an alternate fashion. Let's trade our amulet for that book right here, the Tong No Illustrated Book. I think we'll do that. Let's try exchanging the book for something else. No, he's just shaking our head at us. What do you mean it can't be exchanged? You just exchanged it with me five seconds ago. Ah, screw you, I'm getting out of here and... Let's actually have a look at that book in more detail. The Tong No book is basically your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It contains everything you'd want to know about anything in this game, and the game does expect you to read nearly all of it by the end, if you want to understand what's going on to any great degree. But for now, we'll just check out the world map so we can get our bearings. As you can see here, Tong No consists of five lands, each representing a different part of Rin. And I'll briefly explain how the geography of the land of Tong Now works while we've got this screen up. The Land of Life is located inside Sato's left ear canal, the Land of Desire is located inside Sato's right ear canal, the Land of Time is located inside his left cheek, and the Land of Dreaming is located inside of his right cheek, with the Central Mountain being located in that weird symbol on the back of his head. Just so you kind of have a general floor plan for how the island of Tong Now works, spatially speaking. Alright, let's have a look at the map of the Land of Desire. As you can see, the Land of Desire consists of literally just that room. The only interesting thing in, in it are the pillars and whatever that is at the end. Let's go find that out now, shall we? Let's get out of the Phantom Marketplace first. Wherever you see an eyeball, you can go to the Phantom Marketplace from. It can be accessed from many locations. <laughs> a golden flower. I don't know where to find a golden flower. And I think that's about all we can do in the Land of Desire for now. Let's go explore a different area of Tongno. Let's go check out the Land of Time instead. Ah, the chest. Inside this chest would normally contain the Tongno book, but I chose to get it via means of trading an amulet for it. The shopkeeper presumably having swiped it from the chest before we got here. Or maybe the game's program just can't hold you having duplicate items. The middle fire here will give you a pair of eyeglasses for clicking on them. One other fire here will lead us to the land of time. Any of the others will kill us. I didn't choose the correct one. So we are now actually dead for good. Game over, restore, restart, quit, right? Not so, actually. Death isn't the end in Eastern mind. Merely a new beginning. Because this game takes root in Eastern philosophy like Buddhism and the like. Ah oh, yes, this is the other goal of the game. We must collect the five pieces of our soul, each given to a land of Tongyo. discover what this mirror does in the next episode. And for accomplishing our goal in life, we are given the nameplate. This is how we accrue the nameplates that we need to unseal the central mountain of Tongno. We fulfill the different lives, the lost souls of Tongno, as per the title. So this is the reincarnation screen. You choose the different parts of which there are six in total and then you transmigrate into a new life. There are eight more lives to live at this point, so I'm going to show the shortest one first, because the lives vary wildly in length from several minutes to literally a couple of seconds. And you always have to pick the body parts in the order of eye, nose, and mouth for some inexplicable reason I don't understand. Yep, 
Jin's life does not get out of the menus before ending. His book page is mostly dedicated to the fact that he likes gold, so he was basically crushed under the weight of his own greed. The metaphor is fairly obvious here. But we fulfilled his short life, so we get his nameplate. The character Jin here simply means, like, base or army base or whatever. I don't think there's any deep meaning to this one. So now that you've seen the reincarnation system, I have a choice to make. There are still seven lives to live, but which one should I do first? Which one indeed?